All right, you guys, this is a quick little video of how to wire up pulse width controllers and how to wire them to limit switches. Um, I use these pulse width controllers a lot in my videos. I use them on my sawmill. There'll be a link above to some of those videos here. Um, how to use them for uh, the travel of the power feed and limit that. And I also use them for uh, stepping down board heights, simple things like that. So if you're interested in that, check out those videos. Um, I also use them on my track torch here, and there'll be a link to that video above as well. Um, most of these parts you can find on Amazon, and there will be a link below to most of these parts and pieces. And today we're going to talk about three different pulse width controllers here, what I like and dislike about them, and about my favorite one I've been using so far, which reasons why I like it. And we're going to wire them up to a, some wheelchair motors, which are also awesome. I can't link you guys to that because I didn't buy them on Amazon. I bought them on eBay, but they're plentiful on there for extremely cheap. We'll talk more about that in a minute. So if you're interested in the video, stick around and check it out. All right, here's the one of the smallest pulse width controllers I have. I haven't used it much on projects, but I have it around for just controlling small DC motors if I need to. They're extremely cheap cost-wise, probably quality-wise too. It's Amazon. But anyways, um, you can turn them on and off with the knob here and vary the speed. And it's forward reversing with the switch here. This is good for probably four amps or something like that. And after that, it's going to start taking a toll on it. But this does not have a relay in them. The other ones I'm going to show you have relays for forward and reversing. This one actually sends all the power through the switch. It's fine for low amp applications but I've seen some bad reviews on bigger amperage um, pulse width controllers that actually run the power through the switch it's a cheap way to go and I don't prefer those I like to run the ones with the relays built into them pretty much all these units don't come with any instructions so before you start hooking them up pay attention to what it says um, on the circuit board it says in which would mean this block on this side and out on this side. It doesn't matter the polarity for the output. It's just going to flip-flop your controls on this side. For your DC motor, it doesn't matter. But the polarity on the input's important. I don't think any of them really have reverse polarity protection. If you flip it over, there's a little negative sign and a positive sign. So make sure you get your DC input power coming into here correct. So here's the mid-size pulse width controller. Now we're getting into ones that are a little more robust. This one and the next size up actually have relays. They don't handle uh, the power switching through the switch. They actually handle it in relays which I think they're more robust they hold up better um, this one's rated from 6 volts to 30 volts so it has a wide range you can change you know you can run something on 24 volts if you want and as you can see these two little black boxes right here are actual uh, little relay units which is nice because they don't really handle the switching through the actual toggle switches or anything like that it actually handles it inside on the circuit board through relays and this one also has some decent heat sinks on it to dissipate any heat it actually has pretty good labeling here the power has nice screw terminals negative and positive it tells you what these controls are going out to the the buttons and then it says motor m1 and m2 but it'll handle up to 200 watts that's uh eight amps i believe it says um this one has some unique stuff it does not have an on off switch onto this so you'd have to wire one in or some other way control the on off but it has a variable speed but it also has momentary buttons wired up to it so if you want something to turn counterclockwise or move in one direction you hold it down when you release it stops if you want to go the other direction you push the button down release and it stops be good for certain applications you might find um, this one is not available through the vendor I ordered it from on Amazon, so I'm going to dig around and see if I can find another vendor that's selling them. I'll see if I can find it, and if I can find a link to somebody that actually has them, I'll put them in the description below as well. All right, so this is by far my favorite pulse width controller just because it's robust. It can actually handle the amperage I'm running through it. This style right here I've only used once with the digital display on it. But they're all pretty much the same. They're coming from a similar factory. The ones I've ran were the same module, same body. They just didn't have the digital display. And I had those on my sawmill. I've been using one of them in particular for up to two years. I've never had any of them burn out. I'm gonna go into a little more detail how to wire these. That's what people have problems with. There's some bad ratings because people hook them up opposite, fry them, and then rate them bad. If you know how to hook them up right, you're not gonna fry the things. Um, they've been running continuous service on that sawmill. It's been working great for the power feed, and it definitely has a lot of uh, amperage going through it. They claim this will run from 10 volts to 55 volts, and it will run maximum of 60 amps. I don't know if I'd run 60 amps through it. Maybe it'll handle it, but they're continuous at 40, and I believe it. They work really well. So this one's pretty cool because it has a on-off switch built right into the knob when you vary the speed, and you can shut the unit on and off. And it has forward and reversing switches, and this is what we'll be tying into for the limit switch. Again, it's got small wires. It actually handles all the switching inside and the relays. I'm going to take the cover off and show you guys. This one's kind of cool because it has this little digital display. It might be one more thing to break. I haven't had a problem with it yet, but I just started running this particular one on the track torch recently. But like I said, I've been running the same style of unit without a digital display for quite a few years now. It's been super solid and they're like 
in the 20 some dollar range. So they're not gonna make or break if you have to have, keep an extra one on hand just as a spare. But I'll go into a little more detail how to wire this one up next. So one final thing I wanna note about this one in particular is it comes in this nice little box case. And other than the screw terminals being exposed here, you can put them in a box with other electronics. You can mount them, surface mount them to uh, something or just drop them in an electronic box for your project. And it's not like they're gonna be rattling around in there and the electrical contacts on the circuit board are gonna touch anything because they're encased inside this little box here. All right, we'll get wiring up some switches and we'll hook this up to a uh, DC motor and we'll go from there. So I got two different styles of wheelchair motors. Uh, I want to highlight this because I made a power feed from my bandsaw mill a few years back and I used a very oddball motor and gearbox. It's all I had at the time. I didn't know these were so affordable and available. Uh, the only downside I see with these motors is they're 24 volt, but they can be ran at uh, 12 volts as well. They'll spin a little slower, probably have a little less torque, but they're powerful as hell. Really high quality. And uh, I want to just let you guys know it's probably better and more affordable to buy them in pairs. Just look up wheelchair motors on eBay. You'll come across them. This one has a kind of a weirder mount system, but it's more compact. It's a little lighter. They're very quality. I think I got a set of these with free shipping for 60 bucks to my house. So I got two motors and gearboxes. They're quite powerful. I actually ordered two of these guys. They came with hubs and everything. I think they're about 65 or 70 bucks shipped to my house with free shipping. And uh, they're very high quality. So something to consider if you guys are working on projects, you want super affordable, high quality motors with massive torque. This is the way to go. So here's the unit that I like using on most of these things. As you see, it's got big heat sinks on it. Got these really big relays on here as well. One thing to note, when I hooked up the pulse width controller to the track torch, I had to disconnect the wiring to this and it's not really labeled well. So take a photo of them because I think you could probably flip flop this terminal to take it off and flip it the other way. And I don't know if it would actually have any negative effects on the screen, but just take a photo of it or jot down the way this went on here color wise, because this terminal could be unplugged and flipped around like that. And you wouldn't really know if you got it right or not. So uh, just make a note of that. So on these units, people hook them up wrong and they leave bad reviews because they release the magic smoke. If you know what you're doing, you won't have any problem with them. They'll work fine. But if you can see there's negative, positive, negative, positive, and it has some Chinese writing above it, you don't know which one is the motor and which one is the incoming power side. And again, if you get it wrong, you'll smoke them. So you don't even have to take this out of the circuit board case. Um, you can just flip them over usually and peer in there, but I'll take it out so you guys can see it clearly. Right here, this says power negative, positive, and motor. Like I said, the motor does not matter which terminals you hook up, but the power is crucial. So just make sure you, like I said, you don't even need to take it out of the case. You just need to flip it over and look in there and make sure you get them right when you're hooking it up. So if you do that right, you'll be good to go. So I'm gonna hook up the motor to the pulse width controller. Double check, like I said, you got your motor label here and you wanna make sure you get those screw terminals right on here. Polarity doesn't matter with the motor at all. So we'll get hooking these up. Out of simplicity, we're just gonna wire it up with a 12 volt battery. Of course, anytime you're doing anything like this, you wanna run a fuse block. I got these in five packs on Amazon. I'll put a link with that below as well. So you wanna always have it fused between the battery and the pulse width controller. Quick note, I usually never use wire nuts for these kind of connections. I usually just solder the joints or use butt connectors. Um, but because I'm gonna be taking this apart after this, I just wanna do a quick video and demonstration. I'm gonna use them for it. But anyways, here's the point you always have to pay attention to. Like I said, you got your negative and positive up here and you wanna look down here again, make sure that you're hooking up to the power terminal. Just double check this stuff. So we're gonna hook these up now and uh, hook it up to the battery and we'll go from here. All right, gonna make the positive connection now. Put it onto here and we're about ready to fire up the pulse width controller and it will move this motor in forward and reverse. All right, so the unit's off right now. I'm gonna turn it on. There we go, we got our display. Now, it won't do anything because this switch is in the middle position which is like a, a neutral or no direction. So, we're gonna flip this down, we're gonna turn it up. There we go. Got a nice little display there. So there's 100% stop it like that you can see the motor's got a lot of inertia there so we're stopped and we're gonna go in the other direction pretty slick and like I said off switch there we go kind of funny but the hardest part of this video project today was really just 
figuring out a way to mount the motor temporarily and I got some kindling sticks on here and limit switches glue gunned and clamped onto here so I can show you guys. But anyways, we're gonna first wire this little micro switch up so when this piece of wood comes down on the motor, it actually shuts off the travel in that direction. I'll show you guys how we figure out which side of this limit switch we need to wire to. Now let's talk limit switches a little bit. Here's some micro switches. I think I ordered these in a 10 pack. I don't know if all 10 are actually good. It's probably good to get them in 10 packs, but I haven't had any problems with them yet. But I would count on 10, maybe eight or nine of them probably working right. But I haven't had any problems, but just a rule of thumb with Amazon stuff. And here's a switch I used on my sawmill. This is a little more robust. I, they might claim it's water resistant or waterproof. I don't think it really is, but it's been kind of an outdoor weather for a few years and they've been working fine. And you can change the arm length. You can change the way this is mounted. You can make this arm come down here or any direction it's splined on the shaft. I'll show you guys these things in operation on my sawmill. And um, this can be wired for normally open and normally closed. And uh, same as these guys, they can be wired for normally open or normally closed as well. If you have a voltmeter, they're not very expensive, like 20 bucks. Set it to continuity, meaning that you hear that beep. Every time you touch the contacts, it's getting a closed contact. It makes the beep sound. And on the switches here, you got three terminals. One is C for common, and then the other one's NO for normally open, NC for normally closed, meaning that if it's on the normally closed, which we're going to be using, you run one of the terminals up to the common, and normally closed, meaning the switch is always closed, when it's not activated and when you push the switch down it breaks the signal now it's open and then normally open does the exact opposite now it's no signal coming through it until it gets pushed now we got a signal but we're going to be using the normally closed contact today meaning that's always sending a signal through it until it gets bumped so if we want this piece of wood to come down and stop once it hits on this limit switch so to figure it out remember the yellow wire is the common wire this toggle switch is between the yellow and red and yellow and black so we're just going to actually bridge these two contacts here and if the stick moves down those are the ones we want there we go so that's the one we want to cut we want to cut the black wire and loop it out to the limit switch here. So to wire these limit switches in, we're actually gonna be keeping the yellow wire connected to it. We're gonna be actually cutting the black and red wire and continuing those off to do a loop to the limit switches. I just cut the wire, left a little bit of tail on there and routed it out to the common on the limit switch and then back out of the normally closed back to the black wire again. So instead of these two black wires being connected, they're cut and routed through the limit switch. And again, I just have tape on these contacts. If you're really doing this for a solid thing, like on my sawmill application, I didn't want any problems. So I put shrink wrap tubing on here and soldered the connections just so you never have to worry about a problem with them again. So I'm gonna move this switch and it's gonna stop on this limit switch here. So here's a directional switch. There we go. Now, as you see, the switch is still in the upward position which this limit switch is stopping it. It's breaking the connection. So as soon as I go into the other direction, it'll come off the limit switch again. All right, you guys, I just cut the red wire and wired it to this limit switch, the one I use on my sawmill. I'll also show you guys some video on how I use them in a regular application. So this is just temporary. It doesn't matter. This thing's half a turn or a hundred turns. It's how you apply it. And you can use this to uh, whatever project you're working on. We're going to have it turn over and stop on this limit switch. So it's in the neutral position, the middle position. I'm going to push it up. Now it stops on that, it's still in the up position, but it won't go any further. Now we want to travel it back the other way. We flip it down and it stops. So there's a few other ways you can wire these things. I'll go into a little bit more detail on that. Okay, so I'm going to bring a little cut from an old video I did a few months ago on my sawmill height adjustment. And it was using limit switches and some buttons to control it. And it was a certain purpose I needed to do it for safety measures on the sawmill. So instead of me trying to refresh my memory and go over all that again, I'm just going to put a video clip in here. And you guys will understand what I'm talking about there. Your boat winch, pulse width controller. Uh, some few switches, really simple. And uh, you switch out rulers to set your height. So you guys it going up here, variable speed, so you can go slow. All the way up to the All right, and then uh, if you wanna go down, set on half inch board, so I'll cycle it down one cut. There we go, that'd be one cut. You wanna go down again, cycle it down again. So I got my up button, you just push that, you know, you got your variable speed here. So you speed it up or slow it down. And then you push this once and it'll go to the next notch down. Okay, so once we're in that notch, it's gonna stay and you can push either of these buttons. This was my original bypass and it still is. This is my down button. You see that none of them will work until you hold this one in and you press this one momentary like this. 
Now it's the next cut down. You want to go again, you just push that and push that. Next cut down. And if you want to run manual and just fine tune the mill up or down, you push this one to up and then you hold both of these and it'll bypass all the notches. So yeah, I think that's a good little improvement. And I got some schematics to show you guys that just kind of drew out and uh, kind of explained to you how I wired this thing. All right, you guys, here's a real basic schematics I drew out so you guys can understand how to wire this thing. Pulse width controller, these are three momentary buttons. Here's that normally open button, and here's the ruler with the notches. So the way this normally open button works, and when it's in the notch, it's breaking the circuit. If this slides on the flat part of the ruler out of the notch, it closes the circuit, so it closes and opens that switch. Um, these little dots here are wire connections. These wires have to connect. This little hoop jump over means that it's not tied in with that wire. So we got that covered. I'll talk with a little more about how this works. Pretty much the center wire is the wire you want to bridge either one of these two and make the pulse width controller switch directions for forward and reverse or up or down or whatever you want to do. So anyways, the up circuit's really simple. You just take this wire here and you run it down to the button. It's uh, momentary. So once you push it in, you complete the circuit back to this one and it makes the mill head go up. To go down, it's a little different, a little more complicated. This wire comes down here. Okay, right now it's normally open, so it means it's not feeding power back, so we need a bypass to get it out of that notch. And that's where the bypass cut button comes in. But I wired it after the down button, so you couldn't bump either and cycle in until you had them both held on. And that means that this circuit here comes down, goes to the down button. You have to press that in to get power through to the bypass. And so you hold that one in, you press the bypass button, it bypasses this switch, so this one can get back off the notch into the flat position. That's why that's momentary and you can let off as long as you're holding the down button. The switch will come down to the next notch and when it gets to the next notch, it will open the circuit again and shut off. So that's what's going on there. I hope that makes sense to you guys. So just recently I did a little video on my drill press and I had one complicated part and I didn't probably go into enough detail. The video was getting long enough. I couldn't share all that information with you guys. But what it was, was I have this little tiny component. What it is is a buck down power supply. It takes from six volts to 24 volts and it'll drop it down to five volts at three amps. They come in four packs. They come with no directions at all. So it's really hard to know which way to run it. I guess if you hook it up wrong and you fry it, you got three more. But I'll show you guys a close up of which way is the input, which way is the output. The reason I needed this was because my tack ran off of 12 volts and the LED light ran off of 5 and I had to reduce the power supply to the LED light so I didn't burn it out. So I'll show you guys a close up and show you the inputs and outputs on here. You might want to do what I did was once you figure this out write it on the package so you don't forget it. You might come back to this six months later and can't remember which is input and output. The big red side right here this is your input. Uh, you can just snip it off and just solder right to these wires as a positive is red negative is black. You can run from 6 volts to 24 volts into it and and little tiny white side, five volts out. One other thing, I think I got these at a 10 pack on Amazon a few years ago. They work pretty well. They're just a real simple on off toggle switch. I use one on the plasma track torch. It actually turns on and off the plasma torch for me. I use them on my sawmill for little projects. So those are, uh, I'll put a link in the description below for that. Anyways, if you guys do purchase anything through the link, it helps me out. I don't really make much money with YouTube. And it's kind of an uphill battle with just even getting my channel promoted. So it does help me out if you guys order through that. You don't have to, but it does help me out. Anyways, future note, future videos. If you guys like this, leave a comment below if you want to see a video on this. I've been playing around with proximity switches. And they can read density, magnets, a lot of different things. That um, recent tack that I just put on the drill press actually runs with a proximity switch. They're pretty fun, but they're kind of a little weird to wire up. And I got it, this little one, this is a little infrared switch wired to a relay. And I was playing around with that as an idea to get rid of a limit switch on my sawmill and go a little more high tech. Adds more complication though. And I don't know if I always like that. More complication sometimes adds more problems. I could do a future video if you guys are interested, leave a comment down below how to wire proximity switches and uh, relays and infrared to these uh, pulse with controllers so if you want to see that leave a comment down below and finally if you guys like the video please hit like and subscribe i really appreciate it and uh kind of gets it promoted a little bit more so thanks again for checking out the video guys take care bye